how the military trains entrepreneurs. What's going on, everybody? Your money smart guy, Matt Zapali, here hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters in Oak Brook, Illinois. And I'm very, very excited here in this episode of the Movement Podcast. And for those of you watching us on live stream, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm very excited for having uh, a fellow Marine Corps brother, David Sisson, CEO of Merca Bourbon. Merica Bourbon the right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Merca in the house. And um, I'm just excited for you guys to be tuning in. Derek, thank you so much for being part of it. We've also uh, included one of our our, our fellow um, our fellow uh, veterans on the show, too, as well. Uh, David Blanco will be joining us shortly. And, uh, David, why don't we just start off with you? You're the CEO Derek, of Merca Bourbon. A uh, recon marine. Uh, what what unit were you were you in uh, in the Marine Corps? I was with uh, Second Force Reconnaissance Company and Second Anglico. Nice. Yeah. Air, uh, air uh, Anglico, Air uh, Navy guns. <laughs> Live ammo, all that good Not stuff. Navy huh? guns. That's right. Calling, <laughs> in, calling in the big guns. <laughs> that that's awesome. Very good. So, uh, by the way, where, where, where you where were you uh, recruited out? What what city and state were you recruited Houston, out of? Texas. Houston, Houston Texas. Texas. Yeah. Same place the company's still based out of, you know. It's like Detroit with humidity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very good. Well, you, you guys went through the devastation with the um, Yeah. The yeah. I was there. We, we got an office there off Sam Houston Parkway. And Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas, who runs that office, I mean, they're, they're looking at the 18, 19 foot underpass, overpass, and literally water was that high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was really lucky, you know, our office and warehouse, I don't know if you're aware, you know, myself and Daniel Alaric, you know, with Grunt Style, uh, sure. since it was dry, um, uh, we were able to use that as a resupply center and and uh, able to deliver a lot of food. We I think we rescued over 200, supplied, uh, I think, 20 to 30 tons of food out of there. So a, a lot of your Texas veterans, people came from outside the state to support the cause. Uh down in Rockport, Woodsboro area, Orange, Texas, up toward Richmond, Texas. So it's amazing um, what a lot of uh, veterans, uh, all different generations, can do when they put their mind to it and get together. Absolutely, it was uh, it was a, a formation down to it help us. Yeah, yep. uh, yeah, I saw a lot of that on live video, and and uh, right before that, I, I interviewed Daniel uh, at Grunt Style because he's right here in. Uh, in in the, the the suburbs of Chicago, I'm, I'm pretty sure obviously you're familiar with that, but yeah, yeah that's where he uh, introduced to me uh, the Merca Bourbon. He had he had me uh, sample uh, sample a few, and uh, my team was there, and, and uh, we did a great interview with him. And so let, let's talk about it. let's let's jump right into it. So what what's your um, working relationship with Dan? Because I know he's got Grunt Style, which is boy, I'm, I'm wearing one of his shirts today. There you go, Reaper, yeah. Yeah, right? Myself as well, you know, you too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's doing big things, man. Yeah, he's doing big things. I'm uh, really proud of him. I'm in San Antonio right now um, in my car. I just finished uh, doing a morning show here no. discussing yeah. holiday drinks for America bourbon, mixing a little bourbon, uh, America nog, and uh, America apple pie. So nice. um, going to go see Daniel in a few minutes. He's doing great things. They're just uh, opening up a stitch and sew factory here in Texas as well. Um, he's doing interviews all day. Uh, doing some wonderful things, hiring uh, folks out of the veteran community, not only obviously in Illinois where you're at, but in Texas here in San Antonio as well. Um, our working relationship, uh, we, you know, we, we hit it off immediately, very like-minded entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, we, we, did, we tested the flavor, the quality, whatever that looked like for about six months and basically came up to what, what we have now, America, America Bourbon. Our first uh, competition, we took silver in the Whiskey of the Worlds, which we were really I excited about. That. We're second, second in the world, not just, not just in San Antonio or in America, but in the world. Yeah, it was a world competition. Yeah, Whiskey of the Worlds. So we took sil s silver. So, you know, we're going to start entering quite a few more of those now. Uh, really proud of what we're trying to do. We wanted to make it affordable. Uh, on the shelves, um, I, you know, I know what it's like to be a E1, E2, E3, <laughs> whatever that looks like, right? I, I, I drank a little bit of Night Train Expe Express back in the day. And what okay. have you. And it's <laughs> like the label was done in crayon, you know, by a kindergartner. So I wanted to make it affordable for those guys, a good quality bourbon. And I think we accomplished that. 
Absolutely. By the way, it's a, the best shot of freedom. There you go. There you go. Shot of freedom. Celebrate your freedom. So uh, let's let's talk about that because there's a lot of our, our guys that, that watch this show or watch my my podcast or or watch our, our, our vlogs and listen to our podcast. These guys are looking to make moves too as well. They're looking to make some deals. So you know, how is that negotiation or collaboration with Grunt Style, you know, with and with America Bourbon? You know, um, you know, uh, you know. Obviously, the first step for me is is you know, trying to work with people you like and the like-minded individuals, you know, obviously two veterans that have the same vision is quite helpful. And then it certainly has to be a win-win for all parties involved. Um, You don't want to create problems down the road. And when we did the contract, I wanted to make sure that's what it looked like. Um, Right at first glance, he was happy with where I was going with it. Um, Didn't have to go back and forth. I think it took maybe a week. Uh, once it was signed and we were moving forward with the brand. Yeah, because he's, he's definitely got a lot of different what verticals or horizontals going on. He That's started right. Off and, That's right. That's we added right. Alpha Post and, and uh, now America Bourbon. The motorsports. You know, crazy. I, I was watching uh, kickboxing and um, I forgot what. what, what um, I forgot Glory. What, and the, yeah, going going. Going. Yep. And right there in the corner, boom, grunt yeah. style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the AAA hockey team uh, here in San Antonio. Sponsored. Uh, wow. He's doing some, you know, I'm so proud of uh, him not only as a friend, but as a veteran. I love to see veterans do these amazing things. I love to see these vetrepreneurs just out there kicking some butt. It's wonderful. Certainly for my generation, you know, yeah. seeing some of the, I, I love seeing the camaraderie um, of the younger guys, you know, coming back. And it's just, you know, that's something we didn't have so much of. And I think, you know, with social media, I think that helps a lot, you know, with veterans, with the ease of connecting. Yeah, which I, which I appreciate you uh, coming on this on this podcast, on this, on this live stream video. But this is not edited. This is this live stream. I appreciate you investing time uh, into yeah, the Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Good thing. So how did you get started in business? Um, you know, crazy. Um, you know, I, I, when I left um, uh, the Marine Corps, um, I, I ended up moving to Puerto Rico. And, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it glamorous, um, you know, you know, airborne qualified, you know, (laughs) you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get you the best jobs in the world. People don't care if you're halo or airborne or whatever that looks like, or even the ARS, you know, they're like, what is that? So I ended up a water sports manager at the Sands Hotel and Casino. And I, I was watching the tours and I noticed like the tours to the rainforest, they weren't actually going into the rainforest. It was more like stopping at an observation tower or looking at a waterfall or, you know, getting on a big pontoon boat to look at the bioluminescent bay. You know, so, you know, the diving was just a catamaran going to some island, but it was like, you know, going to the same spot day after day. And I said, man, there has to be a better way to do tours. And so I, 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 I gave some thought and I how can I utilize my background as a veteran? What am I trained at? So obviously, you know, being a rappel master or whatever that looks like, I was able to, um, you know, create my own uh, business, I guess, out of that. So instead of just going to an observation uh, tower, I was actually taking people hiking into the rainforest, letting them swim in the waterfalls, kayaking in the bioluminescent bay, caverning, and so, uh, you know, I started a tour company. I, I got a, my license for the vehicle and started off small. And, and that was kind of my first um, step into becoming an entrepreneur. Wow. So you found a problem, created a solution, and you monetized it. That's right. That's exactly right. How come you, how come you don't think, by the way, we're about to jump into the topic here about less military intelligence, which is pretty fitting for you because that was your job in the Marine Corps is to gather intelligence as, as, as a recon Marine. Um, but, uh, why don't you think more veterans jump in? I asked this to Daniel, he had, he had a pretty unique answer. I wonder what your opinion is. How come more veterans don't look at his entrepreneurship as an option? They look at maybe becoming an officer, a cop, firefighter, which are honorable professions, but why don't they look at entrepreneurship? I think, I think my, the best answer I could really give is, you know, they're so, so used to that structure, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, there's a lot of structure within those kind of jobs, right? I mean, law enforcement, it's, it's almost, I think it's a, it's, it's an easy transition, um, you know, coming out of the military and it's, it's safe. There's job security. It's something that most guys are, you know, uh, adapt at, trained at. And so, um, yeah, I think that's the best answer, you know, jumping out of a, 
you know, becoming entrepreneurs, you know, jumping out of a plane, you know, the first time, you're not, not sure what's really going to happen. Yep. And if you have a wife and kids and, you know, it's a pretty scary, pretty scary task ahead of you. It's, you know, nobody's going to, you have to, when you have to create your own paycheck, that's, that's scary. Exactly. Well, when there's whiskey and bourbon, usually there's cigars. So joining the Movement Podcast and joining this Facebook live stream is David Blanco. We're uh, bringing him on board here in a, two seconds, but uh, he's joining us right now too as well. David Blanco of Blanco doing? Cigars. What's going on, brother? Pleasure to uh, see you guys. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. I leave nobody out. I'm equal opportunity. There you go. Hey, what's going on with the snow, baby? I have uh, no idea. I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm in Chicago. David's <laughs> in Florida. Uh, 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 this is in, in San Antonio right now, right? That's right. Yeah, I'm in San Antonio. What's up, David? What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Merry Christmas. I'm glad you guys were able to both join the podcast and able to join the, the, the live stream here on video. For those of you watching this, make sure you connect with these gentlemen, David Blanco, Derek Sisson of America Bourbon, and David uh, Blanco, Blanco Cigars, respectively. And also make sure you're sharing this on Facebook and live stream. You're sharing this with your profile. Let everybody know, man, that you are inspiring the next generation of entrepreneurs in America today, led by veterans. We got uh, we got two uh, Marine Corps uh, devil dogs out here, too, as well. We also have an Army drill sergeant, right? Former. Former, yes. I've uh, crossed to the dark side now. I'm a uh, commissioned officer. But, uh, yep, I uh, was a drill sergeant for many years. And uh, since you guys are Marines, I'll talk to you very slowly so you understand. <laughs> very good, my man. Alexa. Well, I'm, well, I'm excited about um, uh, the, the topic today. Speaking of now you becoming an ossifer, yeah. right? We, we got to salute you now and call you sir and all that good stuff. But uh, Let's not uh, get crazy. There you go. Uh, let's talk about intelligence because, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Robert Kiyosaki's work. I'm referencing this book at Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs because Robert Kiyosaki, for many of you may not know him, is by saying Kiyosaki, but a lot of people know Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, he wrote that book. He also wrote this book, Why the Rich Are Getting Richer. And the gentlemen that we have on, uh, these veteran entrepreneurs we have on, are taking that path of entrepreneurship to take financial control in their hand, are finding a problem and creating a solution. Myself in the personal finance world and insurance industry, uh, David Blanco in the cigar industry, and um, David Sisson in, in, in the liquor industry, spirits and whiskey. And by the way, just, just a great combination of conversation. We, by the way, we do a lot of events called Cigars Well and whiskey, and the next time we do that, I would love to be able to profile Merca Bourbon and also Blanco Cigars. How's that sound? I appreciate <laughs> that. That's wonderful. Done deal. Whatever you need, we're there for you. Roger that. So Robert Kiyosaki says in his book, military education and training prepared me for the tests required to become an entrepreneur. So, David, let's start with you. What What do you think in your military career, uh, and, well, you're still currently in, in your career as a, as a as a Army officer now in the reserves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, uh, David is from Chicago, went to Lane Tech High School. Go Lane. Go oh, man. Here we go. So uh, what, what do you think prepared you from the military, prepared you for the business world? Well, the, uh, the leadership uh, techniques and style that we were taught in the military is all about team building. Um, so there is a correlation uh, with relative to the team building concept. However, it, it does vary when you go to the civilian uh, aspect of it. But um, getting people to buy into the, uh, the team concept that you're trying to uh, emit and when building your company and or brand, getting people to buy into your vision and your concept is essential to getting guys on the team that you're trying to build in, in, in the uh, entrepreneurial type uh, atmosphere um, to uh, run down the field with you because you can't do it by yourself. Um, so getting your key players in the key positions uh, and getting them to understand the program that you want to run uh, and getting to buy in, getting them to buy into that is number one. So uh, for me, leadership is de defined by uh, the actual definition for me is uh, somebody who is a leader, is somebody who gets somebody to do something that they otherwise would not do of their own accord. Of that definition. So that definition uh, in, in getting somebody to uh, buy into your vision and uh, whatever your business model is for them to work as hard as you, even though they don't necessarily have ownership of the company, and to feel part of that team is essential. And the development, uh, developmental leadership skills that we're taught in the military uh, and the nurturing aspect of it uh, is very, uh, very essential. And being a drill sergeant, former drill sergeant, uh, I was adept at breaking <coughs> quickly 
um, and getting rid of all of the differences that people come to us as a civilian, uh, going to basic training, whether you came from a family with status and money or you came from a family without money and education, um, we, we all turned you into the same thing, uh, zero. We turned you into a zero, and then we built you up together as team members. And that's basically the key, uh, one of the major keys. Uh, my ability to uh, what I learned through the military and how to do that um, puts everybody on par, and it also provides a level of respect that everybody feels that they're the same yet part of the team, and they all want to help contribute to the team rather than do a job. And that's the difference, uh, one of the differences anyway. I like what you said right there. Um, uh, you know, I, I want you to uh, comment there here, Devil Dog, uh, America Bourbon. Uh, Derek, wh when we're talking about breaking down people, I know Marine Corps boot camp has a tendency to break people down. So being a recon Marine has a, has a tendency to break down even also the basic grunts into becoming a recon Marine. But yet a lot of civilians don't go through that breakdown period. They go through their whole life getting broken down. We, we get broken down in boot camp. Like what uh, David said earlier, we get broken down to zero, built up, rebuilt a stronger human being. Uh, what would you, how would you comment on that? Um, you broke up the last part. If you could repeat that last part, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so, so the the so uh, um, so we we break down to rebuild a stronger human being to serve in the military. And how do you think that translates, in your opinion, into the entrepreneurial world? I think that um, I, I think it, it, it humbles you. Um, I, I, I think that it, it, it teaches you uh, perseverance, um, you know, being with, with, with we've mentioned earlier, being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, you're creating your own income, you know. Right. So, I mean, it's adapting and overcoming. I think it teaches that. And, uh, you know, just humility, in my opinion, you know, and, and continuing to to move forward. Mm -hmm. Identifying the mission is also pretty important. Uh to building the uh, the team around you, you identify the mission, give them the tools in which to accomplish the mission, and run down the field with you. If you don't clearly identify those aspects, uh, and that has to do with building a business plan, Hello? business model, you can lose those things. Uh, you can you, you can lose focus, and your your team will uh, have issues as well. Gotcha. Very good. All right. So let's let's talk about the uh, the four main intelligence of of this book. Uh, number one, is <laughs> mental intelligence. Mental intelligence takes place in the brain. Uh, people are normally uh, gifted with mental intelligence. They're usually teachers, scholars, and attorneys. Uh, but he also says that mental intelligence, so there's four major intelligence, right? So let me break this down. Mental intelligence, emotional intelligence, physical intelligence, and and, um, and uh, uh, spiritual, uh, spirit, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. So mental intelligence, he says, is the least important of the intelligence. Like if you were, it's like you're a whiz kid and you're smart. I mean, how many times have we seen smart guys in our in our units, in our platoon, in our squads, in our commands, right? That were smart, but they weren't actually applying it when the bullets started flying and a, you know you know what hits the fan. Right. So there's there's your, your key of um, uh, intellect versus um, common sense, you know, kind of thing. Uh, it, we make fun of officers, uh, the, the enlisted do anyway, for that all the time. You know, he's book smart, but he he doesn't necessarily have a lot on the ball. So it's uh, free thinking uh, individuals and those type uh, definitely have a, an advantage. You got to be quick on your feet, especially in the business world, um, to be able to adapt, uh, overcome, as as our other guests said, um, and uh, and be able to um, pivot on a dime. And that's why key individuals in the team that you build are essential. But as you said, it's not necessarily the most important thing because if you surround yourself with people that know things you don't, that's what a smart man does, right? You can't know everything all the time. So surround yourself with the right people, and uh, they'll help you get there. Eric, how many times have you as a recon Marine been around enlisted and or officers, and when, when it's time to do the mission, it became, it became rank, rank blind. It's, it's all about leadership and who can, who can get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. Over and over again. I mean, that's, you know, obviously when you're going through ARS, you know, they remove all rank and that's distilled in you. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's whoever can get the job done, really. You got to follow, you know, the, the, the hints why, you know, the team leaders, you know, are, are, are built and, you know, there's nothing stronger than a good uh, E5, E6 in the Marine Corps. Yeah, I call Grade e the backbone of the Marine Corps, the gunnery sergeants, you know, sure. those E5s, E6s, E7s, you know that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's all I need to elaborate there. True. <laughs> I'm not offending anyone. I, I re, no, you're not. I, I refer to them as field grade E6s or field grade E7s because the reality is 
there are guys out there that can do my job as, as an officer. Um, and they just didn't have the education and have the diploma to be able to go through OCS or whatever it is. But they're definitely as competent, if not. It's, it's just a, a leadership position, and the reality is anybody can become a leader. You're not born a leader, and that's why we have all the educational fields that we do to uh, develop those. Um, and in sometimes the, uh, the enlisted do a better job of it than uh, officers. I mean, everybody's an individual. And, um, you know, like you said, educational aspects of it. You, you, did, you touched on the other ones, emotional uh, spiritual, sometimes empathy is required, uh, and you have to be able to read your men. And the best sometimes those people that read your men are the ones that are with them every day. Those are the NCOs. Um, so if you're not in touch as a, as a leader with your men and the pulse of your men, or you don't have good senior leadership in your NCO Corps, you lose, uh, you lose that, that, that connection, and, uh, and therefore you're, in, you're less effective. That's, by the way, if you guys are just tuning in right now, thank you for tuning in to the Movement Podcast and also watching us on live stream. Um, you know what? If you guys are sharing this, sharing this too as well, since we're jumping into emotional intelligence, I believe in education and, and, and arming yourself. Uh, I want to give anybody who's sharing this video, we're going to select three of them, uh, who shares this video. I'm going to send you the book straight from Amazon, Eight Lessons in Military Leadership for Entrepreneurs. So if you're watching this live stream right now, or, and you're watching the replay, I'd love to send you this copy, assuming that you share it, but we're going to pick three winners of who that is going to be. Okay, let's, let's move on to the second one, emotional intelligence. It's our ability to control, control, uh, control our emotions. Uh, emotional leaders remain in control, even though we're angry, even though we're upset, even though it's a drill sergeant, you're lighting somebody up, but that's a different story about breaking somebody down and lighting back up. But it's all an act. <laughs> <laughs> but even when you're breaking somebody down, it's in a controlled way to – to build them right, right, uh, build them back up, right, David? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. It's all an act. And when I mean that, when I say it's an act, it's not that it's an act as if we don't mean it. It's scripted. Uh, we do things very uh, specifically oriented to um, elicit certain or evoke certain responses or emotions from people. Uh, so we're, we're, we're button pushers. Our job is to push buttons to break those people down, to, to have that, uh, to have people feel that humility. Uh, and, and ego, and we, we purposely say things and do things to them to strip them of those things. So it's, it's a psychological warfare type of issue, actually, when you're dealing with uh, uh, civilians that are trying to adapt to a military type environment, and that's basically what we do. Part and, of this uh, emotional oh, – go ahead, David. Well, I was just going to say, and, and as a leader, uh, your, your emotions uh, should be uh, not in all aspects, but uh, appropriately kept in check, uh, depending, because you have to instill – uh, a certain feeling amongst your men for esprit de corps, whether it's um, pride uh, or aggressive, aggressive behavior, aggression that you want to evoke, you want to get them fired up. Your emotions will, will go a long way. You're kind of a coach in that regard. Um, you know, they, they're going to take their cue from you. Um, and then if you're showing fear or um, indecisiveness uh, or uh, a lack of technical or tactical capability, um, those uh, same way you could sh you could uh, shoot yourself in the foot as a leader. So um, being able to act appropriately in front of uh, not only your military troops, but in this case, since we're talking about business, your employees and your team members, as you build that team, um, they're going to take their cue off you. If they don't have confidence in you, they won't have con confidence in completing the mission. There you go. Nice. What, one of the portions of emotional intelligence is delayed gratification. It's also another indication of emotional intelligence. For example, a person wants to buy something they can't afford just because they want it now is a person who cannot delay gratification, therefore losing emotional, losing control and having a low, low emotional intelligence. Derek, as an entrepreneur building America Bourbon, what's some areas that you display delayed gratification in building your brand um, in your company? Have you expressed that? Uh, 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 an example come off the top of your head when it comes to delayed gratification? Yeah, absolutely. I think, and you know, one thing I've learned as an entrepreneur and certainly within the wine and spirits industry is my theory is certainly, you know, crawl, then walk and then run. You know, I spent five years as a distributor learning as much as I could about the, the industry, right? Um, visiting all the distilleries, learning of the functionality of the bottles, uh, price points, packaging. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But I wanted to give myself enough knowledge, which knowledge is power, before I did my own brand. So, yeah, I was, wow. I, you know, I, it, it required a lot of discipline because you want to jump out there, right? You want to have your own thing. You want to have your own brand. But, you know, I, like I went from importer, distributor, now brand owner. 
So, so you learn the industry, the ins and outs, the relationships, and somebody else's dime under somebody else's wing. That's right. That's right. That's right. Representing other people's products. And I, I, I ended up being the go-to guy for better and known products as well. You know, I was a distributor for, for Heroes Vodka in Texas and Lead Slingers. And so that was great, too. That gave me a lot of insight and kind of sucked, you know, sucked me in back into the, the veteran vortex, so to speak. You know, because I was kind of out there for a while. And, uh, you know, some of the younger vets, you know, really... I could see that there's, uh, you know, some of the big things they were doing and also being able to mentor some of the guys from the, the generation behind me. That's awesome. Let's go on to the third uh, uh, form of intelligence uh, that we get taught in the military, which is spiritual intelligence. And by the way, I'm not talking about religion, but spiritual intelligence is located in the heart uh, where greatness comes in, where the guy that is a private does something that a sergeant uh, is supposed to do or un unwilling to do. Um, uh, General MacArthur has a quote here that said, it is failed to enter a war without the will to win it. Well, I think uh, uh, Derek, uh, his, his cell phone got cut off. Dave, it's just me and you for right now. I think Derek's going to come back and his cell phone just got interrupted. So what, what's, what's from the heart? How have you, as an entrepreneur, um, stepped forward in faith and encouraged to build Blanco Cigars? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. He's not online because this is a story right here. I have... Uh, <laughs> trials and tribulations with, with building my brand uh, from the ground up, uh, from jump. So when I first started the company in uh, 98, uh, we opened up our own cigar factory. My uncle was running it. Uh, my family are all military veterans uh, as well as entrepreneurs. Uh, and my uncle, my father, and myself were partners. My uncle ran the factory. My father ha handled administrative issues as the president, and I, as the vice president, did product development and everything else. Uh, my, my uncle, uh, two years after we opened our factory, came down with multiple sclerosis as a result of uh, – um, exposure to Agent Orange in Vietnam. Uh, mm -hmm. and wheelchair and I was no longer to, uh, able to run the facility. We closed our factory and shifted production to another family member's uh, factory. So that was hurdle number one that we had to uh, regroup and go in a different direction entirely and lost a huge part of our investment because we lost the factory. Uh, secondly, uh, shortly after that was 2000. By then, uh, shortly after that, we all know what happened on 9-11. My father uh, ended up uh, leaving immediately to Iraq because he was also serving an active reserve at the time and was um, gone for two years. He said, good luck, kid. It's up to you. Keep it running as long as you can. And I lasted for about six months, and then I was in Afghanistan, and so we had to close the doors for almost two years. So when I came back, the company was in tatters. My sales force had uh, dissipated. Uh, sales were in the toilet, and it was basically like restarting the company all over again. Now, at that point, I could have said, Timing was wrong. It just didn't work out. Move on to something else. I have degrees in other things. I have experience in other things. I could have continued with military active duty. I had plenty of offers to contract, but I had never given up at anything in my life. So I decided, uh, nope, we're moving forward. And I'm gonna. If I did it once, I can do it again, with a lot less money now because our investment had uh, had evaporated after two years. But uh, we were able to do it, and I hit the ground running and uh, never gave up. Uh, that type of fortitude. Um, is rare. I have I found out since then. <laughs> and yeah, that what I basically yep. Yep. So, uh, basically what I expect from my team members uh, is is what I tell them all the time is that I expect nothing of you that I don't expect of myself. And as a, as it relates to the issue of the the you know the heart, um, as officers and senior NCOs in the military, we always eat last. Our men eat first. And in business, it is the same thing. With regard to that delayed gratification, we eat last. I pay my employees. I have payroll. I have to pay my taxes. I have to pay for licenses. I have to pay everybody everything. And whatever's left on the table, if there are any scraps, then it comes to me. You know, Not to mention the reinvestment of the money into the company to help it grow. So right. those are the aspects of the uh, delayed gratification that I think anybody in any business, any businessman worth their salt, or, or any leader that, that has experienced leadership in the military understands that it's a uh, mission, men, self. So you are last, always. Love it. It's leadership from the front. Uh, right. let's, let's go into, the, uh, let's go into the, uh, the next form of intelligence. We've got, uh, we covered uh, uh, mental intelligence, emotional intelligence. Uh, we covered physical intelligence. Let's talk about, let's talk about um, the, um, the aspect of it coming from the gut. What are some of the areas, you know, because he talks here about um, uh, things comes from the heart, uh, but um, 
but uh, but but from the um, mental aspect, the the mental emotional aspect of it, that uh, sometimes you got to make some gut decisions. You know, uh, what what are some of the areas that you guys as entrepreneurs so you may may not have connected to that, but may not have been right on the spreadsheet. And I've been not because everybody logically is making a decision. What are some aspects of entrepreneurship you guys have made from the gut to gut to see this in Derek, you want to go ahead and take that since you were gone for a while? Yeah, I'm breaking up. You're breaking up real bad, Matt. Um, we got we got a bad connection. Maybe you could try to repeat that. I'm sorry, I'm getting every other word. No problem. What's 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 an area of entrepreneurship that you constantly are using from the gut? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Then we can hear him, right? I can hear fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're fine, buddy. What's some of the areas of entrepreneurship that you sometimes run from the gut, even though sometimes it doesn't make logical sense? I think that, um, I mean, even when you're working with somebody, right? I mean, whenever you sign a contract, like with, with what I did with Grunt Style, you know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, you're working right out of the gut. You're going with your instincts, right? Is this Is this, you know... Is this the right fit for me? Is it the right match with any kind of partnership or whatever that looks like? Um, whether it be in my industry, is this the right fit as a distributor? I, you know, I, I work out of the gut a, a lot, and um, it, it, it hadn't failed me yet. Very good. David? From my, from my perspective, my industry has been under assault for uh, uh, many years now with regard to smoking regulations, uh, overburdening of taxation and things of that nature. So I have had to become very creative with uh, revenue uh, generation, uh, raising of capital since we had to close our company and we lost a, a lot of our initial investment. How do we come back from that? You can't go to a bank necessarily and say, hey, I need a loan for a couple hundred thousand dollars. I'm in the tobacco business. They're going to slam the door in your face because it's just one of those things they don't like to touch. So I've had to become very creative um, and, and kind of go off, like you said, the gut with regard to what is a limited liability or risk um, that has a benefit that I could either, either either sustain or get through even if it failed. So there's a calculated risk there. And anybody that's in business will tell you we're all gamblers. We may not gamble at the table in Vegas, but there's a certain amount of gambling that you'll, you'll, uh, you have to take in any type of business. So like he said, with uh, relationships uh, and signing of contracts, Grunt Style is a perfect example. Um, as I think I mentioned, if I hadn't mentioned it, uh, he and I might be doing some business together very That's soon, right. making a American bourbon um, uh, barrels aged cigar. So uh, I'm proud and honored that he asked me to do that. I look forward to doing it with him and bring it out in 2018. Um, and that's a relationship that I think is a good fit. We have a, a lot of common uh, knowledge and experience, and, and we come from the same place, and we're kind of cut from the same cloth, even though this is a digital uh, Marine Corps and mine's not. Uh, close enough. It all said U.S. It all said U.S. in that uniform before anything else. So we're all in the same team. And I think we can translate that into the business. So, um, But other than financial issues and things of that nature, um, there have been uh, regulatory issues of non-smoking and how do we get around those and still play within the rules and the limits. Um, we, we had an increase in um, uh, our, our federal excise tax uh, with the Obama administration of over 700 percent, which killed a lot of companies and brands just went out. Uh, we had to come up with some type of solution for that. So we came, became a U.S. Customs bonded facility of our own accord. Cost us a $50,000 investment, something that we hadn't. But that was a gamble that I had to take to survive the next wave of onslaught. The current one we're, we're currently going through is the FDA regulating tobacco premium cigar. And we're trying to survive that. And we're lobbying and educating people to the fact that we are not the same as tobacco and big business like cigarettes are. So – there's constant things that you're doing to to adapt to your surroundings and the constant challenges that arise, whether it's internal or external, government or not. Uh, we're international companies, so we sell all over the world, uh, and we have to deal with governments and 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 legal issues from and and laws and taxes and regulations from everything. So it becomes very complicated. Yeah, I could elaborate on that. Uh, you know, we're you know David and I both understand alcohol and tobacco are amazingly complicated when it comes to compliance. I mean, with alcohol, it's state by state, right? Every law changes. For example, in Texas, you have a three-tier system, and, you know, the other states are control states where you have to, um, uh, you know, sell directly to the state, for example. Just really heavy, heavy, heavy on the compliance. Wouldn't you agree, Dave? Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's uh, yeah. phenomenally complicated, and we have to adapt to each one of the 
state governments, and then within the state governments, each county, as I don't have to tell you, being in Chicago is its own little fiefdom. Yeah, fiefdom. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the Republic of California out there on the West Coast that yeah. likes to do their own thing. You know, it's it's uh, those are just within our own borders. Uh, you know, you try yeah. dealing with France, Germany, Spain, Belgium. I mean, it, it goes on and on. The Middle East. I mean, it, it's everybody's got their own cultural differences in how they do business as well. So I have to adapt to how they do business. I might I might come in shaking somebody's hand and looking at them a certain way, and that might just be the wrong thing. So you you have yeah. to. Be very aware to, uh, to your surroundings um, and you take risks where you can calculate them. And sometimes you don't even calculate them. They take them, they take risks by you and you didn't even know you took one. Um, but yeah, uh, David, would you agree that, that there's so much, like I said earlier about going with your gut? Absolutely. Absolutely. If it, yeah, if, yeah. If it doesn't pass the smell test, don't do it. That's you know? right. If you That's can't, a good way of putting it. if you can't, if you can't ante up into the game and afford to lose what you're gambling with, then don't gamble it. You know, there's calculated risk. If there's a certain amount of, of, um, uh, of money or, or, or capital that you're willing to invest into something as a gamble and, and it pays off, great. But if it doesn't, you have to be prepared to lose that. If you don't have the ability to gamble that and be prepared to say, you know what, it was a, it was a bad decision. I, I can move on. I'm going to survive this. Yeah. But don't do it. And don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to apologize because um, I'm just now getting to hear David's uh, answers and so forth. So I was in the dark earlier. So I, I uh, logged off, came back on. Now I can actually see you and uh, interact with you. And so well, I wasn't hearing any of that. Let, so. be, being yeah. a Marine, we know you were always in the dark, but we'll get past that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. All this new technology. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Army guys always had a nice toy. New toys, yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, guys, as you're watching this live stream, we covered four major intelligence that you can apply from the military into business, which is, uh, number one, uh, mental, number two, emotional, yeah. spiritual, and number four, physical. And uh, we've discovered that uh, mental, uh, being brain smart, book smart, is the least important after hearing these these entrepreneurs uh, transition into the into the veteran, the veteran entrepreneur community. David, can you hear me? I got you. Leave me, Charlie. Okay. Yeah, I don't hear anything from Matt. But David, you hear me? Leave it, Charlie. Licking chicken, baby. All right. So, um, hmm, what's what's going on there? You might, you might be using an Android. That's probably what the issue is. You're using, <laughs> or we're using iPhones over here. But um, this, Derek, can you, can you still hear me? He's not. He's not tracking. Well, listen. What we do is, why don't you relay this for me, David? So ask, as we close off the show, as we close off the show, what's one bit of advice that he would give to potential uh, a transition um, veteran that's going to consider the entrepreneurial world versus, versus just getting a traditional job, which is fine, but ultimately going in business for themselves. So, Derek, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I can't see you now. I, I, okay. I don't hear Matt at all. So he wants me to ask you to close out the show. What would – piece of advice if you had to give one piece of advice to those looking to possibly transition into the entrepreneurial uh world rather than getting a traditional job what would that piece of advice be um it would it would go back to what i said before limit you and i think you mentioned it earlier as well i would i would crawl walk then run i would limit my financial um risk and i would uh, definitely find mentors that were involved in the industry that i was in um, I would, there's a lot of, there's a wealth of knowledge of uh, folks, if you're willing to listen and they can help you for making a whole lot of mistakes. Right. And I, I'm probably going to reiterate that basically it's uh, do your due diligence, understand the industry right. and what you're looking to get involved in, and the business model, understand and develop your business plan uh, to the nth degree, know it forward and backwards, make sure you've covered all the aspects of it. And if you don't know your industry well enough, like you said, find a mentor or somebody who actually has experience in that industry already that you can lean on. Maybe work in the industry that you're looking to get involved in, as he said he did. And he understands the facets from being in them at every level and go from there. If you're able to, uh, to shoot holes in your own business model, then you've got a problem. Uh, because you sure, right. sure should know that somebody else is going to do it for you if, you if you're not doing it yourself. So uh, Absolutely. Be, be wholeheartedly aware of what you're getting into. And if you have the passion and drive for it, be prepared to be hungry for a long time and reap the reward when you're successful and have a backup plan if it goes sideways. That's the reality. There you go. Nothing's guaranteed here. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank you for Amen. 
uh, to share your knowledge and experience. And by the way, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out. We'll put the links here at the bottom of the comment section. Also, with this, a blog post here at moneysmartguy.com. But make sure you check out Derek Sisson of Merca Bourbon and David Blanco of Blanco Cigars. By the way, David, which, which cigar did you have me try uh, when we were in uh, Dallas? I think it was the, the Cigar Obsession first third, or it might have been the Blanco 9. But uh, for all of you that uh, are interested in cigars and interested in finding out more about Blanco Cigars, check us out at BlancoCigars.com. You can follow me on Facebook at David Blanco. Um, David Blanco the Man is my public page, and uh, you can check me out there. I'm on Instagram at David Blanco 007 or D, D, yeah, DA Blanco 007. You can find me everywhere. I'm out there, guys. David Blanco. Hey, uh, would you care relaying the same message to Derek? Yeah, Derek, uh, where can people find you out at? You got a website, Instagram, Facebook? Yeah, abso- abs- absolutely. You can, at, you can you find can- us. <laughs> You can find us on www.americabourbon.com. Uh, of course, we're on America Bourbon on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. Awesome. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for investing to the veteran entrepreneur community. It's a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Country, and uh, I'm glad I get the opportunity to talk to others with similar mindset that might be looking to go down the same path. And happy holidays to everybody. And as I always say, stay smoky. Woo! Smoky, baby. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me involved. Uh, reach out to me if you're a vet and uh, want any advice as far as entrepreneurialism, and I'll be here for you. And have a safe and wonderful uh, time with the holidays with your families. Appreciate you guys. All right, gentlemen. We'll connect again soon. Take care. All right, you too. Derek, Thank you. buddy. Semper Fi, Devil Dog. David, hoorah. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it, man. Well, that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in to this live stream with me, the Money Smart Guy on the Movement Podcast. I am broadcasting again here from my headquarters here in Oak Brook, Illinois. By the way, I want to give you guys a quick shout out as we wrap up the show. So Latina Vega, words of wisdom. Appreciate that. Latina Vega out of out of New York. Uh, we've got uh, Nina Bass Knight, who uh, is in the Army. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Veronica Cruz. What's going on, Veronica? I love that mission, man, and self. Thanks for tuning in, Vero Vero. Uh, Vlad AG, thank you for tuning in too as well. Yes, the best. Uh, listen, guys, I, I want you guys to know, uh, Monique Welsh here says, uh, definitely sharing this, love the point on emotional warfare. Absolutely, Monique Welsh out of Atlanta. Thanks for tuning in as well. I appreciate you guys for tuning into the show where we uh, are surrounding us with a community of people that want to know more, do more, and be more. And that's been my journey. I've been in this, in, I've been in this industry now. Uh, in the insurance industry, I've been an entrepreneur now going on 18 years. I can't believe I'm saying that. 18 years. I did eight years in the Marine Corps. And I'm thankful, so thankful that somebody showed me the path of entrepreneurship. Somebody showed me the path of taking financial control in my hands. When I see what's going on in America today, when I see a lot of people, 90% of people living paycheck to paycheck, when I see even one out of 10 people making $100,000 a year living paycheck to paycheck, um, the path for me to, to never have that situation has been entrepreneurship. Has it been pretty? Absolutely not. Uh, has it been a muscle that I've had to build over time? Absolutely. But as Derek Sisson has said earlier, you got to find somebody that you work under. You got to find a community of people that you can plug into and you can limit your financial exposure to the business endeavor that you're starting. And so if that's you, you say, Matt, I want to start business in 2018. I want to have financial control in 2018. My, my recommendation to you, we are looking for folks to connect with all across the country. Uh, our company, PHP Agency, we just received a $10 million investment from Oscar De La Hoya, Gabriel Brenner, and Greg Sharon and the Adelaide Group. And we're rapidly growing and expanding. We started with, with 60 guys in 2009. And today we are, we are officially 12 quarters beating our last quarter in a row. So close to three years, we beat our last quarter every quarter for going on three years now. So it goes with a lot of hard work. It goes a lot along with building a team that, that goes along with um, uh, uh, finding the right personnel, having a lot of patience, having a lot of uh, delayed gratification, applying the, um, the the intelligence that we just talked about during this uh, podcast. Amante Landor says, not pretty, but worth it. Absolutely. Amante Landor is a is a, uh, a current uh, Army reservist too as well. Appreciate you j- uh, jumping on. Uh, Jacqueline says, what's up? Awesome. Uh, nice that you are joining us too. Nina Bass Knight, uh, Financial Independence. Listen, again, as, I, as I'm wrapping up the show, I want you to connect with the people that can help you. 
you know, the insurance industry has been a saving grace for me. I'm not saying it's, it's the right industry for everybody, but entrepreneurship has been the journey for me, the decisions to find a, the next best version of myself. And the last time I worked for somebody else was in 2001. And I've been in six figures since 2003. My wife had been working together. When my wife and I, we started dating in 2012, about less than a year, about less than a year, she, she, got, she, she, she joined me in business and she quit her $100,000 a year job. Entrepreneurship has allowed me to retire my, my now wife, my then girlfriend slash fiance, um, eight months into working together with me. She replaced her $100,000 a year job. Uh, she fired her boss. Uh, before before she turned 29 years old. And uh, my wife and I have been running uh, together full-time in business going on uh, four or five years now. And I tell you, it's been, it's been a saving grace for us. We've had financial control here. We've been able to have conversations with our family about finances, serious conversations about vacation, serious conversations about retirement, serious conversations about getting out of debt. Why? Because we're in the industry. We have the ultimate backstage pass to what's going on to increase our financial education and literacy. So Danny Banks says, my, uh, my people that want to know how to get involved, contact me. Absolutely contact Danny Banks. Uh, he's one of our associates too as well. And I appreciate you guys for tuning into the show. If you haven't done so already, like it, comment it, share it. And uh, we are here to create a new awareness. If you haven't heard about PHP AT already, the Money Smart Movement podcast. By the way, we have a vlog that we are 24 episodes deep. Sunday will be the next release. We'll be 24 episodes deep into what you have never heard of the Living Money Smart vlog. It's the first ever veteran entrepreneur and insurance industry vlog. So you get an insight of actually how we do things. Our world, the skills that we build, the offices that we fly to, the people that we're mentoring, attracting, and coaching. Um, and this Sunday's um, episode is be killer. Uh, we went to uh, San Jose. Uh, we went to um, San Diego. Uh, we're launching an office in Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, we went on a trip to Dominican Republic. So listen, uh, by the way, the benefit of being an entrepreneur is that you can have tax-deductible business vacations. Tax-deductible business vacations. When you have business and your personal time together, there's a portion of that travel and expenses and ticket and uh, lodging that you can write off on your taxes. So there's a lot of things you can do. There's, there's two different tax codes. And by the way, today I just got an update that the house has officially passed the uh the house has officially passed the the bill the tax reform bill the biggest tax reform um where is it here the a republican plan to pass tax legislation by christmas was considered laughable by 3 months ago but it actually happened and so um uh it's the most sweeping tax changes in a generation and we want you to take advantage of that. There's, there's two different tax, regardless of what tax reform gets passed. Which you can't control what goes on in government, but you can control your finances. doesn't matter what goes on in the White House. The most important thing is what goes on in your house. And we want your financial home. We want to encourage your financial home to get in order. We're not, we're there, regardless if you do that or not, it's completely on you. But we want you guys to know that there's a way to get financial freedom. There is a way for you to get the best out of life that you want. There's a way for you to live the lifestyle that you want to, that you want to live. But you got to make moves. You might. You got to make decisions. You got to surround yourself with, with with like-minded individuals. I start. I started my business in this industry with this career for less than five hundred bucks, and it's paid me millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. I would have never been able to do that at a regular job. I would have never been able to take out my my, my wife was, uh, wants to, uh, to go out and grab some food right now. But I'm never able to do that in a regular job without asking for approval. If you want to live your life. Without asking somebody else for approval, consider entrepreneurship. If you want to live your life without asking somebody else if you can get a raise, because even though if you bust your tail and work hard at your job, but yet they control whether or not you get paid a, a, a new a new pay raise or increasing your income. If you want to say enough of that, reach out, contact us, message us, drop a comment, um, and we can refer you either to our office here in Oakbrook or to the other 52 offices we have across the United States. So... With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, wishing you an early Merry Christmas. Obviously, uh, happy holidays. And I'll see you guys same time, same channel, Monday, uh, Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here, the Movement Podcast. Appreciate you guys for your comments. Till we meet again.
Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. And be money smart today. Merry Christmas.